Uh, good evening to you, Vice Chancellor Designate. First, uh, I suppose no doubt the messages of congratulations are still pouring in. Thank you very much, Bongani. Yes, they are. They are. Uh, messages of support um, uh, are pouring in and it's encouraging. You've expressed a commitment to make UCT unapologetically African. What do you mean? Well, our vision 2020 currently is to make sure that UCT is inclusive, engaged and African. I inserted the word unapologetically because it's about time that UCT becomes not just the best university in Africa, but the best university for Africa. And being the best for Africa means that we should first accept who we are, that we are African and that's okay. And we can in fact lead the world even with that identity, that that identity is not a downside, uh, it is a strength. Our location on the continent is not a downside or a weakness, Guys, is a strength. So being unapologetic about it is recognizing the strength that we bring to, to the scholarly enterprise and how we can position Africa as, as a force um, globally in, in research and academia in general. Well, transformation remains a challenge in academia in South Africa, particularly, of course, at formerly white universities. Many academics complain of efforts to undermine them from colleagues as well as the student body. Uh, you yourself have had uh, false information spread about you, for example, raising questions about your qualifications. How are you going to change all of that and navigate it in a way that makes it easier for those that will come after? I think, I think we at UCT are fortunate because currently we have a reconciliation commission going on, part of which is to deal with the, with the aftermath of um, February 2016. Um, but also, that's the first phase. The second phase is to deal with issues of institutional culture. We have all agreed as an institution that our institutional culture has to change. It has to become more inclusive. And just having that agreement in our strategic plan that we started implementing last year says everyone in the institution agrees that the institution has to change, has to be inclusive, it has to be more engaged, and it has to be uh, uh, African. The, the only thing that we have to agree on is how we get there. And that will be the challenge of us as the leadership team. How do we take everyone with us to get there. And, and I think doing that is firstly uh, agreeing on the framework for transformation. Um, and, uh, you know, when we talk about transformation, oftentimes people look at uh, how many black people do you bring into the university, whether students, whether staff, and that's important. It's about access, it's about equity of access. How do you make the institution accessible to people who were previously denied access? But but, but, but the one thing that we haven't been successful in in South Africa in general, not just at UCT, is what do you do after access? When people are at the university uh, and they're different and perhaps uh, they were previously not present in the, in the space, how do they change the space just by being there? Or how does the space change just by virtue of having them there? Because it, when students come into a university, uh, it, education is a process of transformation. So they themselves are going to transform just through the education that they will get. But it's not, it shouldn't be just one way that we expect them to assimilate. The institution itself has to change just by virtue of having the diverse group of people in the space. And that's, that's part of what the institutional culture will be about, looking at what equity of participation looks like. And then when, when, if you get equity of participation right, then you can look at equity of success. What do we look like in, in, when it comes to success? Who succeeds, who drops out, who takes much longer than other people and why? And we're going to have to challenge ourselves as a university because we, as the University of Cape Town, recruit the best students in the country to come to UCT. And, and when they get there, we've got to recognize that we've got creme de la creme. And so it's our challenge to, make, to, to say, how do we work with them to become what they have come here to become. 
Uh, how do we work with them to achieve, to get their degrees and get out of here yeah. as, as emerging academics? Uh, that's going to be a challenge for us. As much as our academic environment is going to challenge our students intellectually to push themselves and, and, and work hard so that, uh, because that's what education is about. University education is not supposed to be easy, but it's not supposed to marginalize you either. And, and, and for me, the, 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 the transformation in terms of the people we bring is going to be that. Of course, we, there's already processes that are in place uh, to look at uh, symbols on our campus, because symbols matter. Who do the symbols speak to on, and for? And, 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 and so we have our Works of Art Committee that looks at the symbolisms on campus yeah. and, 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 and critiquing them and also with the idea of coming up with what should they look like, the symbols on campus. Prof, I'm going to come in there when you talk about access, when you talk about uh, making sure uh, that the university speaks to everyone on campus and that everyone succeeds. Uh, what, of course, uh, the, one of the concerns I imagine uh, you will have is that the institution, even though it attracts the crowd, creme de la creme, as you say, does not uh, get perceived to be elitist. We also know South Africa faces high levels of unemployment and half of our youth are jobless. Uh, our education system doesn't seem to always produce the skills needed by this economy. How are you going to deal with all of that? Also, taking into account, we still have a number of unresolved challenges around demands for free higher education. And we know UCT didn't necessarily cover itself uh, in glory during the Fees Must Fall campaigns. Mm. Bongani, the, 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 the challenges that you're talking about of students coming out of university not necessarily ready for or, or, or not getting jobs, I mean, I think uh, the, 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 those challenges are not just um, about a state of economy. It's also about the changing world that we live in. Um, the, 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 the fourth industrial revolution is, 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 is going to throw us into a tailspin. And so we at universities are already engaging on those issues. What, what's the future of work? Uh, what, 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 in terms of the, what kind of graduates will cope with the future? And, and, and that says to us, we've got to look at a curricula, not only in terms of making it relevant to our students and so on, but also making it be able to, 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 uh, to ensure that our students come out of the university ready to face a constantly changing world that, that is not the same as it is right now. That jobs will look different. Um, uh, oftentimes people talk about entrepreneurship and that's important, but there's other ways of, 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 of um, embracing the fourth industrial re revolution and making sure that students are, are, are ready for them. So, so if you can think about it, I mean, the engineering faculty um, uh, will have a challenge of looking at, uh, at, at the, the curriculum in a different way, their science. Uh, what, what is, what, what does the, how does their, the science that they do, uh, what does it contribute to the changing world that we are facing? Uh, the humanities faculty will look at it differently as much as so. It's like looking at how do you make it relevant and how do you make sure that it, 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 it positions our students well enough to participate in this changing world. I think, I think that challenge would have been there whether fees must fall came or not. Um, uh, because of the fourth industrial revolution. I mean, I think that the, the, the challenge of the, the activism that came with fees must fall and roads must fall, um, uh, uh, in a way, in my view, highlighted um, the, the, um, our inability in university leadership to engage with Generation C, a kind of generation, a connected generation that looks at things differently, that doesn't have much trust in, in hierarchy uh, and structure, and, 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 and doesn't care much about profits, uh, but cares much about um, social, being socially responsive and social justice and so on. What, what, in a way, it seems as if we were not ready for that. And I think the experience of from 2015 up to now has positioned us a little better. Uh, I don't want to be naive and say we are ready. Any kind of protest that come, we'll just handle it and, and it will go away tomorrow. There'll be protests and, and things will change. And, 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 um, and, and, but, but, but what we have learned is the importance of listening, the importance of not judging before you understand why the struggle. It's important because when you understand why the struggle, then, then the critique uh, 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 becomes lessened. Um, uh, just calling students hooligans when they are pushing their struggle, uh, in a way, 
um, before you understand what they are struggling about is, is actually problematic. And I think the experience from 2015 to now has, has sort of opened our eyes as university executives to saying they, they, there's, there's, it is important to understand um, our current world, it is important to understand how the struggles of the workers connect with the struggles of students. It's important to understand why actually fees must fall was inevitable. It was bound to happen. When I look back, I say, but it was bound to happen. In a way, we could have uh, we could have um, uh, uh, um, anticipated it, um, uh, and and I think the experience is going to be important moving forward. Well, you say listening is going to be a necessary skill uh, in uh, your coming new position at Fab Academic is your social media handle on Twitter. You're going to need to be savvy uh, in that area as you are, in fact. Uh, and of course, every one of your students will simply be a tweet away. Thank you very much for your perspectives. And once again, congratulations. That is, uh, of course, uh, Professor Mamukheti uh, Paikeng, uh, the Vice Chancellor designate at the University of Cape Town.